Deep down here by the dark water lived old Gollum. I don't know where he came from, nor who or what he was. He was Gollum, as dark as darkness, except for two big, round, pale eyes. He had a boat, and he rode about quite quietly on the lake. The lake it was, wide and deep and deadly cold. He paddled it with large feet dangling over the side, but never a ripple did he make. Not he. He was looking out of his pale, lamp-like eyes for blind fish, which he grabbed with his long fingers as quick as thinking. He liked meat, too. Goblin, he thought, good, when he could get it. But he took care they never found him out. He just throttled them from behind if ever they came down alone anywhere near the edge of the water while he was prowling about. They very seldom did, for they had a feeling that something unpleasant was lurking down there, down at the very roots of the mountain. They had come on the lake when they were tunnelling down long ago, and they found they could go no further. So there their road ended in that direction. There was no reason to go that way, unless the great goblin sent them. Sometimes he took a fancy for fish from the lake, and sometimes neither goblin nor fish came back. Actually, Gollum lived on a slimy island of rock in the middle of the lake. He was watching Bilbo now from the distance with his pale eyes like telescopes. Bilbo could not see him, but he was wondering a lot about Bilbo, for he could see that he was no goblin at all. Gollum got into his boat and shot off from the island while Bilbo was sitting on the brink, altogether flummoxed and at the end of his way in his wits. Suddenly up came Gollum and whispered and hissed, Bless us! And splashes, my precious. I guess it's a choice feast. At least a tasty morsel it'll make us call. And when he said call, he made a horrible swallowing noise in his throat. That is how he got his name, though he always called himself my precious. The hobbit jumped nearly out of his skin when the hiss came in his ears, and he suddenly saw the pale eyes sticking out at him. Who are you? he said, thrusting his dagger in front of him. What is he, my precious? whispered Gollum, who always spoke to himself, from never having anyone else to speak to. That is what he had come to find out, for he was not really very hungry at the moment, only curious. Otherwise, he would have grabbed first and whispered afterwards. I am Mr. Bilbo Baggins. I've lost the dwarves, and I've lost the wizard, and I don't know where I am. And I don't want to know if only I can get away. What's he got in his hands is, said Gollum looking at the sword, which he did not quite like. A sword, a blade, which came out of Gondolin. <sniffs> said Gollum, and became quite polite. Perhaps she sits here and chats with it a bit, see, my precious. It likes riddles, perhaps, does it? Does it? He was anxious to appear friendly, at any rate for the moment, until he found out more about the sword and the hobbit, whether he was quite alone, really, whether he was good to eat, and whether Gollum was really hungry. Riddles were all he could think of. Asking them, sometimes guessing them, had been the only game he'd ever played with other funny creatures sitting in their holes in the long, long ago before the goblins came, and he was cut off from his friends far under the mountains. Very well, said Bilbo, who was anxious to agree, until he found out more about the creature, whether he was quite alone, whether he was fierce or hungry, and whether he was a friend of the goblins. You ask first, he said because he had not had time to think of a riddle. So Gollum hissed, What has roots as nobody sees? He's taller than trees. Up, up it goes, and yet never grows. Easy, said Bilbo. Mountain, I suppose. Does it guess easy? It must have a competition with us, my precious. If precious asks and it doesn't answer, he eats it, my precious. If it asks us and we doesn't answer, then we does what he wants, eh? We shows it the way out? Yes. All right, said Bilbo, not daring to disagree and nearly bursting his brain to think of riddles that could save him from being eaten. There are thirty white horses on a red hill. First they champ, then they stamp, then they stand still. That was all he could think of to ask. The idea of eating was rather on his mind. It was rather an old one, too. And Gollum knew the answer as well as you do. Chestnuts, chestnuts, he hissed. Teeth, teeth, my precious, but we is only six. 
Then he asked his second. Voiceless it cries, wingless flutters, toothless bites, mouthless mutters. Half a moment, cried Bilbo, who was still thinking uncomfortably about eating. Fortunately, he had once heard something rather like this before, and getting his wits back, he thought of the answer. Wind, wind, of course, he said, and he was so pleased that he made one up on the spot. A sort of puzzled and nasty little underground creature, he thought. An eye in a blue face saw an eye in a green face. That eye is like to this eye, said the first eye, but in a low place, not in a high place. Said Gollum. He had been underground a long, long time and was forgetting this sort of thing. But just as Bilbo was getting impatient, Gollum brought up memories of ages and ages and ages before when he had lived with his grandmother in a hole in a bank by a river. My precious, he said, sun on the daisies, it means it does. But these ordinary above ground, everyday sort of riddles were tiring for him. Also, they reminded him of days when he had been less lonely and sneaky and nasty, and that put him out of temper. What is more, they made him hungry. So this time he tried something a bit more difficult and more unpleasant. It cannot be seen, cannot be felt, cannot be heard, cannot be smelt. It lies behind stars and under hills and empty holes it fills. It comes fast and follows after, ends life, kills laughter. Unfortunately for Gollum, Bilbo had heard that sort of thing before, and the answer was all round him anyway. Dark, he said, without even scratching his head or putting on his thinking cap. A box without hinges, key or lid, yet golden treasure inside his head, he asked to gain time until he could think of a really hard work. This he thought a dreadfully easy chestnut, though he had not asked it in the usual words, but it proved a nasty poser for Gollum. He hissed to himself, and still he did not answer. He whispered and spluttered. After some while, Bilbo became impatient. Well, what is it, he said. The answer's not a kettle boiling over, as you seem to think from the noise you're making. Give us a chance. Let it give us a chance, my precious. Well, said Bilbo, after giving him a long chance. What is it? But suddenly Gollum remembered thieving from nests long ago. And sitting under the river, teaching his grandmother, teaching his grandmother to suck eggs as he is, eggs as it is. Then he asked, alive without breath, as cold as death, never thirsty, never drinking, all in mail, never clinking. He also, in his turn, thought this was a dreadfully easy one because he was always thinking of the answer. But he could not remember anything better at the moment. He was so flustered by the egg question. All the same, it was a pose of a poor Bilbo who never had anything to do with the water if he could help it. I imagine you know the answer, of course, or can guess it as easy as winking, since you are sitting comfortably at home and have not the danger of being eaten to disturb your thinking. Bilbo sat and cleared his throat once or twice, <clears throat> but no answer came. After a while, Gollum began to hiss with pleasure to himself. Is it nice, my precious? Is it juicy? Is it scrumptiously crunchable? He began to peer at Bilbo out of the darkness. Half a moment, said the hobbit, shivering. I gave you a good long chance just now. It must make haste, 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 said Gollum, beginning to climb out of his boat onto the shore to get at Bilbo. But when he put out his long, webby foot in the water, a fish jumped out in a fright and fell on Bilbo's toes. Oh, he said, it's cold, clammy. And so he guessed. Fish, fish, he cried, it's a fish. Gollum was dreadfully disappointed. But Bilbo asked another riddle as quick as ever he could, so the Gollum had to get back into his boat and think. No legs lay on one leg. Two legs sat near on three legs. Four legs got some. It was not really the right time for this riddle, but Bilbo was in a hurry. Gollum might have had some trouble guessing it if he'd asked it another time. As it was, talking of fish, no legs were not so very difficult, and after that the rest was easy. Fish on a little table, man at table sitting on a stool, the cat has the bones. That, of course, is the answer, and Gollum soon gave it. 
Then he thought the time had come to ask something hard and horrible. This is what he said. This thing all things devours. Birds, beasts, trees, flowers. Gnaws iron, bites steel, grinds hard stones to meal. Slays king, ruins town, and beats high mountain down. Poor Bilbo. He sat in the dark thinking of all the horrible names of all the giants and ogres he had ever heard told loving tales, but not one of them had done all these things. He had a feeling that the answer was quite different and that he ought to know it, but he could not think of it. He began to get frightened, and that's bad for thinking. Colin began to get out of his boat. He flapped into the water and paddled to the bank. Bilbo could see his eyes coming towards him. His tongue seemed to stick in his mouth. He wanted to shout out, Give me more time. Give me time. But all that came out with a sudden squeal was, Time! Time! Bilbo was saved by pure luck. That, of course, was the answer. Gollum was disappointed once more. And now he was getting angry and also tired of the game. It had made him very hungry indeed. This time he did not go back to the boat. He sat down in the dark by Bilbo. That made the hobbit most dreadfully uncomfortable and scattered his wits. It's got to ask us a question, my precious. Yes, yes, yes. Just one more question to guess. Yes, yes, said Gollum. But Bilbo simply could not think of any question with that nasty, wet, cold thing sitting next to him and pawing him and poking him. He scratched himself. He pinched himself. Still, he could not think of anything. Ask us, ask us, said Gollum. Bilbo pinched himself and slapped himself. He gripped on his little sword. He even felt in his pocket with his other hand. There he found the ring he had picked up in the passage and forgotten about. What have I got in my pocket, he said aloud. He was talking to himself. Gollum thought it was a riddle and he was frightfully upset. Not fair, not fair, he hissed. It isn't fair, my precious. Is it? Not fair, is it? To ask us what it's got in his nasty little pockets is? Bilbo, seeing what had happened and having nothing better to ask, stuck to his question. What have I got in my pocket, he said louder. <sniffs> his father. He must give us three guesses, is he, my precious? Three guesses, is Very well, guess away, said Bilbo. And is, said Gollum. Wrong, said Bilbo. But luckily, just taking his hand out again. Yes, again. <sniffs> said Gollum, more upset than ever. He thought of all the things he kept in his own pockets. Fishbowl, goblin's teeth, wet shells, a bit of bat wing, sharp stone to sharpen his fangs off. Another nasty thing. Tried to think what other people kept in their pockets. Knife, he said at last. Wrong, said Bilbo, who had lost his some time ago. Last guess. Now Gollum was in a much worse state than when Bilbo had asked him the egg question. He hissed and spluttered and rocked himself backwards and forwards and slapped his feet on the floor and wriggled and squirmed, but still he did not dare to waste his last guess. Come on, said Bilbo, I'm waiting. He tried to sound bold and cheerful, but he did not feel at all sure how the game was going to end, whether Gollum guessed right or not. Time's up, he said. String or nothing, shrieked Gollum, which was not quite fair, working in two guesses at once. Both wrong, cried Bilbo, very much relieved. He jumped at once to his feet, put his back to the nearest wall, and held out his little sword. He knew, of course, that the riddle game was sacred and of immense antiquity, and even wicked creatures were afraid to cheat when they played at it. But he felt he could not trust this slimy thing to keep any promise at a pinch. Any excuse would do for him to slide out of it. And after all, that last question had not been a genuine riddle according to the ancient laws. But at any rate, Gollum did not at once attack him. He could see the sword in Bilbo's hand. He sat still, shivering and whispering. At last, Bilbo could wait no longer. Well, he said, what about your promise? I want a girl. You must show me the way. Did we say so, precious? Show the nasty little baggins the way out? Yes, yes. But what has it got in its pockets, is it, eh? Not string, precious, but not nothing. Oh, no, Gollum. Never you mind, said Bilbo. A promise is a promise. 
atrocities in patient precious is gone. But he must wait. Yes, it must. We can't go up the tunnel so hasty. We must go and get some things first, yes. Things to help us. Well, hurry up, said you. Relieved to think of Gollum going away. He thought he was just making an excuse and did not need to come back. What was Gollum talking about? What useful thing could he keep out on the dark lake? 